In the last example, we talked about how we can use Bernoulli's equation, which basically derives from conservation of energy, to relate the speed, height, and pressure at different points along a fluid that is moving. And just quickly, looking at this equation, assuming that your height is the same before and after, you can see how if your speed goes up, your pressure actually goes down. So that's what this question is referring to when you go from a bigger fire hose to a more narrow nozzle, the pressure drops. We can draw a quick picture of what's going on here. This is assuming, of course, that the nozzle is designed well enough that the transition is nice and smooth. So you can imagine that the fluid can move from here all the way to here and then outwards, right? Out from the nozzle. So yes, we can draw that streamline. Yes, we can apply Bernoulli's equation with my fluid in question to be, again, water in this case. Summarizing between point 0.1 and point 0.2, we don't quite know what the initial speed is or the final speed. We know that it's horizontal. That's the assumption. And then we know that at point 0.2, it's open to the atmosphere, where at point 0.1, we don't know what the pressure is, but it's going to be something higher than the pressure at point two. That's what we're after. And also label this as like P1 and then afterwards find the difference between P1 and P2. But I'm just going to use the delta P already inside. So you try to solve this. It's like we have too many unknowns, right? We don't know V1. We don't know V2. We're not given those, but we can find those out easy enough. And that's because in this case, they've given us the volume flow rate, symbol Q, which is your change in volume over change in time. How does this relate to my actual velocity? Well, you can look at point two, you have a certain area, and after a specific time delta T, you're gonna get amount of fluid that is the length of V delta T as sort of a cylinder. So we can also express this Q as a times V delta T, delta T cancels out, so it can be expressed as A times V. The other thing to note is because the fluid, we assume that it's not compressible, the amount of volume of water you shoot out at point two and the volume of water that moves forward at point one is exactly the same. So we can say that Q1 is equal to Q2, so therefore, this we already used a little bit last time. You can relate the velocity of two different spots along a flow fairly easily. Because we use it quite often alongside Bernoulli's, I like to call this Bernoulli's buddy. But really, it's saying that the fluid doesn't compress, so then the amount of volume flow rates should be consistent throughout the flow. But fortunately, in this case, they even gave us the volume flow rate, so that applies to both of these, so we can actually really quickly figure out V1 and V2. We have 40 liters per second divided by something with a diameter of 9 centimeters, so pi r squared, don't forget to divide by 2. But we gotta convert a bunch of units to eventually get to meters per second, so we gotta change liters to milliliters, then milliliter becomes a centimeters cubed, by definition, which gets us close because we have cm square here, and so we still have to convert that one last one centimeters into meters. The square, of course, still applies to the 9 and the 2, like that. Similarly, with the same kinds of unit conversion, and you can also see that because our diameters decrease by 3 times, when you square it, you're decreasing the area by nine times, giving you a speed that is nine times as big. So now we have basically all the numbers except delta P. So let's put it in and get delta P. This year we talked about how that's PATM plus delta P minus PATM. So that becomes just delta P. And then this here we just sub in some numbers. And using your calculator, you can get the pressure drop to be quite significant in this case, times 10 to the 6, or we can say mega Pascal. Just as a point of order, you can compare that with the P atmosphere. You can look up 
it's 15 or 16 times the pressure of the atmosphere. As an extension, the pressure drop could also actually be even greater if the transition between the hose and nozzle is not smooth and you get swirling and mixing going on. But that has to do with frictional losses, which we're going to assume doesn't affect the flow here by using Bernoulli's equation. And we'll leave part B alone because we already dealt with projectile motion in the last example. But in part A, we've again dealt with Bernoulli's equations as well as what I call Bernoulli's buddy, which will take care of all the cases we'll have for flowing fluid that's incompressible and also no frictional losses.